In this video I'm comparing uh, eight different receivers and looking for dynamic range with signals from a real antenna and also with signals from signal generators. Uh, one is the air spy and spy verter combination. Uh, I have set the gain to 16 here and uh, I have to have a fan on the box. If I remove that, I lose two decibels of uh, signal to noise ratio. And to compensate for that, I have to increase the gain quite a bit. And that will be not so good for dynamic range. So, there is the arrangement with the fan on the box. And the next one is the Air Spy HF Plus and no magics with that. And then there is the uh, SDR Play with the SDR Uno. And this one uh, needs to run for 10 minutes or so uh, before it gets the proper operating noise figure. If I switch it off and wait for a while and then switch it on, the noise figure is about 2 dB above what it is after having been running for a while. So uh, the, Air, the SDR UNU is the one which now is routed to the loudspeaker system. And the signal is analyzed on this screen. And you can see here, there is a line at zero. This, this line at zero uh, measures the signal-to-noise ratio. It does that by uh, measuring all the power within the passband from here to here. It is this mark and that mark, and I have set the passband equal for all the receivers. And that power is compared to the power of the weak signal, which is extracted through this filter, which is only 20 Hz wide. And what is in this range is excluded from the power, from the wide uh, power determination. So, uh, I have set all the receivers to show zero means to show the same noise figure, means the same noise floor uh, to which the strong signals then relate. The next receiver on this screen, the last one, is an IC706, uh, where this instance of Lindrad is uh, Record is analyzing and setting the filter bandwidth for the audio. On this screen I have a Perseus and an Aphedri, the Net Aphedri. It's a two channel unit but I'm using only one of the channels. And then there is a FDM S1 from Elad. And finally, a FunCube Pro Plus. Here is the setup. First, there is the antenna here. Uh, and after that, a coupler, 20 dB coupler, that allows me to inject the signal from a signal generator here. And then there is a low pass filter at 15 MHz. This is to prevent the local FM broadcasting to reach the amplifiers. The amplifier and a 3 dB attenuator to not saturate the next amplifier here. Uh, and then a 20 dB coupler uh, on which I connect an oscilloscope. That is to verify that this amplifier is not saturated. Then comes the stepped attenuator, 
by which I can set the level of the signal that proceeds further down streams. And that is the uh, attenuator on which I read the quality of the different receivers. Then there is a notch filter that has a notch on 7.198 MHz uh, to remove all the signals and also intermodulation products that might be generated here so that when the receivers are set to the notch frequency anything that can be seen will be generated by the receivers due to intermodulation and other non-linearities. Then after the notch filter is a 6 dB attenuator uh, followed by a coupler, a th minus 3 dB coupler that will send, split this signal into two equal signals uh, one on each output here and then into that 3 dB coupler is also this signal generator which is also split into a minus 3 dB signal on each one of these output lines. The 6 dB attenuator here is in order to present something near 50 ohms to this coupler because otherwise there would be no isolation between the two outputs. Uh, then after these outputs there are uh, three port splitters attenuating by 5 dB each one splitting the signal into totally six different paths. One of them here is followed by a splitter that attenuates by 3 more dB and splits into two different receivers and here there is also a splitter that splits this signal into two. And then uh, finally there are different attenuators uh, 11 dB in front of the AirSpy HF Plus and 1.4 dB in front of the FunCube Pro Plus. Uh, there is no attenuation in front of the Spyverter and AirSpy. Uh, the Aphedri has half a dB. The Perseus has no attenuator. And the IC706 has 9 dB attenuation. The FDMS1, no. And finally, the SBR Play has minus 3 dB. So, uh, I know that the Perseus here, the noise figure is 22 dB. So it means uh, with the 3 dB attenuation here, the noise figure at this point here is 25 dB. Uh, so you can compute from this the total attenuation uh, what the noise figure of the different radius is. And of course that's not the specified noise figure because I have turned down sensitivity uh, in order to get the desired noise figure of 25 dB at these points in order to get the measurement here to show zero for all the receivers. And here is the setup. The antenna comes in in this cable into the uh, 20 dB coupler into which I can send a signal with this cable. Uh, then the signal goes into this blue thing which is a low pass filter from mini circuits. This is an amplifier with BFR91 or maybe it was BFR91A, two of them in parallel. And then 3 dB attenuation on the output turns out to be what is needed to get a sufficient margin from saturating this amplifier here uh, which is a 
and you read PSA 4 5043. And the output of this amplifier goes to this minus 20 dB coupler uh, in here, out here, into this attenuator where I set the signal level sent further into the notch filter. And this coupler, uh, it sends a signal to an oscilloscope where I can look for problems with saturation in this amplification system. And here is the notch filter, followed by 6 dB attenuation, and then this uh, hybrid, the signal that comes in here, comes out here and here with 3 dB loss, it's simply split. And here comes a signal from a signal generator, comes out also with the 3 dB signal loss here and here. But this one has not went through the filter, it's my reference, the weak signal that is used as a pilot tone for checking uh, the noise figure and uh, checking actually most importantly how the noise figure is degraded when too much is sent through into the other of these two ports. Uh, and then there is a three port splitter. This one is connected to uh, the SDR play to the ELAD FDM S1 and to another hybrid that splits uh, to two equal signals, one going into this Perseus, the other one through 9 dB of attenuation into this uh, which is the IC706 Mark II G. And the other output here, this one, goes into another three port splitter and one of the ports goes directly into the spyverter and the air spy. Uh, Another port goes into this uh, splitter that splits the signal into two equal halves. It's designed for 14 megahertz, but it works pretty well also on 7 megahertz. And from this one, there is an attenuator here, 2 dB, uh, and then it goes to uh, this attenuator, 10 dB, into the uh, air spy HF+. Plus. And here uh, is another attenuator, 1.4 dB, uh, going into the FANQ uh, Pro Plus. Uh, and then the last port goes to this one, which is the Aphiedri, this one, uh, SDR net, uh, which has an attenuator here. And I notice now there is a typo. This is not 11 dB, it is 12 dB here. So this one has to be 15. Not that it matters, but uh, because what I'm doing is to measure uh, dynamic range and what you come out is what is the noise figure, but that is not really what I'm interested in in this context. Uh, the good amateur knows how to add an attenuator or to add a low noise amplifier 
if the noise floor is not at the right place when the antenna is connected to the receiver. Dynamic range. That's something. If it's not good enough, uh, there's not nothing. There's not much we can do. Maybe uh, notch filters or something, but that's rather more complicated. I have temporarily disconnected this cable that goes to this hybrid and instead put the cable here that goes to the network analyzer I have here. So it goes to the RF in for transmission measurements and the RF out from the network analyzer goes to this uh, coupler at the antenna. And here is what I see. Uh, the gain is maybe 17 dB here at 1 megahertz and it is uh, maybe 13 dB at uh, 12 or 13 megahertz or something. Uh, now here is a 20 dB attenuation in the coupler so it means that the gain from antenna to the attenuator output on the notch filter is something between 37 and 33 dB. What I see on the oscilloscope now is like that. So this is the antenna signal. The network analyzer signal is so weak I don't see it. But I can increase the power level. Uh, we have now uh, minus 50 dBm. I change that to minus 30. And it looks more nice, but nothing changed. But you can see here that the spectrum and that the network analyzer gives a signal that is stronger than what I have from the antenna. The peak level from the antenna is uh, maybe almost 10 dB uh, lower than this. And I can increase the power more, minus 20 dBm. Look now. And I lose about 1 dB. There is 1 dB compression now. And the level for that is as high as this. So is, this is, seems okay, but I'm checking it regularly. Because signal levels vary with the time of the day and with the time generally. Now I'm running the SDR play. You see it's running and it doesn't say stop. Uh, the output is like this. As expected, of course, I have zero, means I have the correct noise figure. And I tune these knobs until I see something here. That was far too much. Well, I'm looking for a degradation of about 3 dB. And I will do that for all the receivers. And you can see here, uh, I have some interference here, and you can see it up here as well. Uh, I have to make this one, let's say, minus 5. No, the other way. Uh, I make it 5. To hopefully see it better, but I don't see it better. Uh, it's a weak thing. Here is another weak thing, and together they add also with the white noise. 
for a degradation in the order of 3 dB. And as you can see, it varies with time, 2 dB, 4 dB, and now it's 3 dB. So the level for the SDR play is 21. Is it possible to see that? No, probably not. Uh, 21 on the attenuator. I switched it off and you can see that the level here is very low as compared to the level uh, when the audio was on from the SDR play. When I switch on the FunCube dongle, it uses the same tuner chip so it should be fairly similar. What? It says no input down here, so uh, something went wrong with it. I have to restart. I had to disconnect the dongle and connect it again. This doesn't happen often, I don't remember it ever happened actually. But there are many things on the USB on this machine now. I don't need to see that. And here is the S over N evaluation. And I turn on the attenuator until I see a S over N loss here. Too much. This takes some time because the effects of all the interference varies with time and one has to wait for a while to see what is a reasonable uh, average over a reasonable time. Anyway, this seems to be about a 3 dB. Degradation, well, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. It's now twenty two DB, and that seems to be. fairly okay. So, 22 dB for the FunCube Pro Plus. The next one is the Air Spy uh, Spy Verter combo. Switch it on there. <laughs> And it doesn't like the signal levels, I have to turn them down. So, this is what I have without the antenna signal. And I turn the antenna signal on. And it behaves quite differently from the other ones. It 
because that is not okay. Well, something like this. This is uh, twenty eight dB. And uh, it turns out that the white dots turn red out here it means I have a too high level on the audio I will change that X P from 2000 to 200 say And I switch off the antenna signal and as you can see uh, the yellow track is at the same point the white has disappeared I have to change here so now I changed the level inside the rod to prevent uh, the levels here to become too high and now I again uh, send the antenna signal into the air spy spyverter. Oops. And this is too much. And this was a change by 2 dB and it's not too much anymore. So this is 25 dB. But sometimes there is extra interference. Uh, the mechanism is clearly different here compared to the other two. This uses a different chip and something is different, not surprising. So I switch off the Air Spy Spyverter and switch on the Air Spy HF Plus. And it looks good. I give it more signal from the antenna. That was 10 dB more. Now it's 20 dB more. And that's about what it can take but you notice it is looks very different and maybe I give it one more DB so the HF plus is now 4 DB only And now I'm running the Aphedri and turn up the antenna signal. Seems like this is 
Well, it varies with time. I wait a little bit more before I decide. Right now it's on 10 dB. And I think no, 12 might be more fair. Now there isn't any degradation. So it varies well. 11. Well, 10 dB. So that's 10 dB and you can see sometimes there is a CW signal and that uh, degrades the uh, signal to noise ratio now and then. And now I switch to the FDM S1 and it looks like this. Well, I remove the antenna signal. And this is, it has a noise figure about 1 dB, 1 dB below my reference. So I want to see a degradation by 3 dB from this level. This is 5 dB. This is 3 dB. 2 dB. And it does misbehave quite clearly. But uh, these are pulses and they are absorbed by lean rod. So we actually still can hear the signal. But it's a little bit ugly. I put this for uh, 3 dB. And go for the last one, the Perseus. And it shows 0. And I bring up the last 3 dB I have here. And it isn't affected. It is a little bit better than this. Now, uh, the time is uh, nearly 3 o'clock in the morning. And the activity on the bands is a little bit lower than it will be earlier in the evening as well as in daytime. So, uh, I will get numbers for the Perseus later on, but right now I don't see any degradation. Well, I removed the 3 dB attenuator from here, and then actually I can see a little interference on the Perseus. So, it is maybe needs Rather than attenuation, it reads maybe 4 dB more gain. Here is the IC706. Looks like this. And I inject the antenna signal. And 
this is too much. I have put the 3 dB attenuator back here and uh, this is approximately what it can take from the antenna and of course varying with time and it has problems with close range intermodulation this is a, an analog receiver so I can hear the false signals, some CW. Uh, this is at the level of 2 dB and maybe I should make it 3 dB. goes up and down. I decide that 3 dB could be fair. I mean these comparisons are not very accurate. Couldn't be because the antenna signal varies with time. It's now 10 minutes past one in the middle of the day. I'm listening to the uh, SDR play uh, and as before Gain reduction here is 59 dB. The oscilloscope looks like this. Peak levels are a little bit higher than in the night. And there is higher frequencies if I change the trigger point. Signal to noise evaluation looks like this, and I add now uh, the antenna signal until there is a degradation. And that is too much. This looks like the 3 dB signal to noise loss. And I get that at a setting of 23 dB on the attenuator. And here is the FanCube Pro Plus. And it looks like this. I didn't change the attenuator, so I increase. Well, first I remove the antenna signal to check the reference point, zero. Well, a little bit below, but not much. more than this. And I had to increase 10 dB and then go back with the 1 dB steps. So It's something like this. And this is 17 decibels. Here is the air spy spyverter combo. 
and I find the noise figure has degraded by nearly 2 dB. So I increase the gain a little here from 16 to 70 and that increased the signal level quite a bit but it did not improve the noise figure and even if I increase more the noise figure does not change much I don't know the reason for this I will have to try to find out I have replaced the air spy by another one and it starts at the proper noise figure and then it drifts in frequency at this point outside the passband so I had to shift the frequency again but it comes to the same noise figure as the other unit this is the R1 and the one I had before was the R2 so I will put back the R2 air spy and now I put back the R2 and it shows the right noise floor now while it's drifting rapidly so I have to wait for a while and probably get down to minus 2 again we will see I have to change the frequency as you can see I can do that on the audio side but I don't want to change it much because uh, then I have to change all the other radios so I wait for a while I must believe something has happened in the spyverter I don't have one more of those so I continue without changing anything but no, notice now that this measurement is done at a 2 dB higher noise figure. So I add the antenna signal. Oops. Here is a 3 dB loss. Roughly from 2 to 5. And this is at the setting of 23 dB on the attenuator. But taking the different noise figure into account, uh, I should write 25. Because the noise floor is higher, so I, I have to compensate for that. I switch to the HF Plus, and it has the appropriate noise figure and I increase the signal level from the antenna Oops. Uh -huh. so now it is 19 and here is 18 So, the number to take down is 19. And now I'm running the Aphedri. You can see the audio is on. And I see what I want to see here. Zero means 25 dB noise figure at the point of the three port splitters. Uh, and I increase the antenna signal. 10 dB steps, oops, that's far too much. It's now 19. Twenty-one. No problem. Twenty. There are problems, but roughly 3 dB. So uh, 20 dB is the setting for the aphedri. 
And now the FDM S1 is the signal source. And it is about 1 dB uh, higher noise figure. I think that was the case also before and I didn't compensate for it. But I will do that in the uh, following measurements. So, adding a strong signal. Well, this is unacceptable. This is 10 dB, and this is uh, not causing any problem. Means we are saturating uh, at this point, and that is 11 dB. So I write 12 in the protocol because of the 1 dB too high noise figure. Here is the IC706 and it looks like this uh, without the antenna signal. And I can hear something but it doesn't make much difference. on the noise figure evaluation. I arrive at something like this setting. And uh, well, that's uh, 9 dB. And finally the Perseus. It is on now. And the main spectrum is not correct. You can see how the noise hair at the notch jumps up and down. But in the IF it doesn't. And this is now 29 dB on the antenna attenuator. And I add the antenna signal 20 dB more. So it is now 9, 8, 7, 6, five, well, 5. Um, and you can see more clearly that it is jumping up and down here but on the IF you can see we have something here uh, I have not centered the signal properly uh, in the notch so I will fix that I changed the signal a little bit towards lower frequency I don't remember, but you can see on the frequency scale here, if you compare to previous value. And now I don't see much degradation, but I'm still at 5 dB, so I increase the signal. And here we have a problem. But this level is okay. And what I read here is 1 dB. And you can see that the notch filter isn't quite wide enough, so there is a little contribution on the signal here. But I want to run it at the higher bandwidth, 2.4 kHz, because I get better statistics on the noise evaluation, and uh, it isn't important to me what the values are on the passives. It is just to make sure that the measurement system doesn't affect the other radius. So uh, I put one 
here on the Perseus. It's now one hour later, 14.10, and I'm running the STR play again. And the noise figure is about 1 dB too good, and I will compensate for that. I didn't do that before, but the error is 1 dB, so it's not so important. And I turn up the antenna signal. Before I had 23, so I set it to 23, like that, and the degradation is very small. I turn on two more dB, and one more. So the situation is now easier for this radio. Here, I want minus two since I had plus one without the antenna signal. And what I see on the attenuator now is not so easy to see 18 dB. And I write 17 in the protocol because the noise floor was 1 dB lower than the reference floor that I wanted to have. Now the FunCube Pro Plus is active mm. and the level is a little bit, uh, the noise figure is a little bit better than uh, desired, but I don't take that into account, it's too small. Uh, I had 17 before, so I put in 17 now, like this, and uh, this is too much signal, 18. So, 19, and as you can see here, I take these images to also make sure I don't do mistakes. I have made now uh, several series of measurements at different times. Now it's 8 o'clock in the evening and the last one I will also document. I have not made videos of all the measurements because the video would be too long. Right now it's the SDR uh, play that is running, as you can see here. and. It shows zero as desired and the previous time I had 32 so I put 32 here and you can see there is not any degradation 30 and well what? Yes. So the radio environment has changed since the previous time. Uh, what I see is 23 here. So I write 23 here. And go for the stop that and start the fan cube dongle here and remove the antenna signal and the noise figure is at the proper position zero here 
or very close to at least. Uh, the previous time I had 31, but uh, probably I will have 22 now because I guess the uh, it has the same tuner chip as the STR Play, but. This is 25, which seems to be the appropriate setting at this time. Twenty-five. And then the air spy spy verter combo. And no antenna signal and it shows zero uh, it has recovered, I don't know the reason uh, something like 30 is probably what it can take 35 30 well, here is twenty seven. Well, maybe just a little bit more signal. Twenty six was not good enough, so I make it twenty seven. So that's twenty seven here. Here's by HF plus. And it's on zero and something like eleven was recorded before well this is a 5 dB loss of signal to noise ratio or so I go back 1 dB and I find 16. 16. And then the Afedri Net SDR is here. And without antenna signal, I read 0 as I want. And I inject something uh, about twenty. Twenty is okay. Fifteen, not okay. But nineteen is okay. Uh, 18 is not at all. So, 19 for the net STR. And then the FDM S1. It's here. And without the antenna signal, the noise figure is about 1 dB higher than I want it to be, but it has been like that all the time. So I look for a 3 dB loss from this point.
and it's about here. Uh, uh, this is 10 dB. So I write 11 here because of the 1 dB error in the noise floor. And then the IC706. And it's half a dB. I will not correct for that. And then insert antenna signal. This is 5 dB. And this seems to be uh, roughly what I want. Maybe a little more signal. Now 4 dB. So it is 4 dB for this one. And then, finally, the parasols. Uh, so, away with... Oops! There is some error on the video card. Uh, that causes it to go black now and then, but it doesn't affect the processing. So, the parasols with zero on the attenuator and that causes no degradation or very small. So I remove this attenuator and as you can see uh, this signal is too strong. So I attenuate 1 dB and this is the level I want. Means I write minus 2. Here. Now with six uh, series of measurements, I take the average for each radio, and this is the final figure of merit. Uh, best is, of course, the Perseus. Uh, three on the negative side means have to add gain, means removing that uh, attenuator uh, to make it produce interference. Second best is the IC706. Third is the FDM S1. And you can see the differences are not so small. After that comes the Air Spy HF Plus at 13. And then the Afedri Net SDR 17. And then the uh, tuner based SDR Play and FunCube Pro Plus. They get the same result. And finally, the AirSpy plus Spyverter is 4 dB below those two. Uh, this video now is now <clears throat> more than one hour long, so I will stop here and continue in the next video uh, comparing with this setup using other filters than the notch filter or the notch filter in combination with a fairly narrow bandpass filter because these things will affect how the radios uh, react on antenna signals. And I will also do some tests with signal generators and this will be one or maybe two more videos in this series.